The Incredible Hulk is a television series based on the Marvel Comics character The Hulk. The pilot movie aired on CBS in 1977, followed by the TV series in 1978, and starred Bill Bixby as Dr. David Bruce Banner, Lou Ferrigno as The Hulk, and Jack Colvin as investigative reporter Jack McGee. Bruce Banner was traumatized by the car accident that killed his wife and was haunted by his inability to save her. Banner begins to research people who were able to summon superhuman strength during moments of extreme stress. Banner experiences on himself with gamma radiation and accidentally receives a massive overdose that causes him, when he gets upset, to turn into a green-skinned, superhumanly strong creature who is driven by rage. The TV episodes show Banner's nomadic life as he roams around, taking odd jobs and searching for a cure, all the while pursued by an investigative reporter who believes Banner is somehow connected with the Hulk. Like Jack McGee, we at Typewriter Meds have been doing our own investigation. We have been looking for a green Hulk of a typewriter that, deep down, is really just mild-mannered, pleasant, and hard-working. This is Jonah from Typewriter Merits, and today we are going to be doing a review of a 1971 Sears Newport. So we picked this up not long ago, and we're guessing at the year. They made these from 1971 to 1974, I believe, and they all look the same, at least as far as I could tell. This was made by Mesa, a Portuguese company. They made the orange chevron, which is a a standard carriage version. This is a long carriage. They also make the Malibu, which is a blue one, and probably some other models. I can't think of off the top of my head. But this one has some, I think, really cool angular lines to it. It's just a really different, different looking typewriter. It's kind of a mix of plastic and metal. The bottom panel's plastic. The side panels, which wrap around from here to the back, are plastic. This piece here is metal, well, aluminum, I believe, and I'll show you in one of the clips how that attaches uh, when the body panels are off. It's kind of an interesting design. And then another plastic panel that wraps around to here. But this cover is made out of metal. And one of the things that caught my eye with this model are the push buttons that you have here on top. And so over here, we, what do we have here, Jonah? The color selector. So why don't you be my guest and hit that color selector switch again. So it toggles from red, stencil, black, stencil, red. Kind of neat. It's kind of like a, a Princess 300 has the same type of push button action on their typewriters. And same thing over here. Uh, what do we have, Jonah? The touch control. Uh-huh. Go ahead and push that button. And it toggles from two, three, two, one. And in one of the clips, when I have the body panels off, I'll show you how those function. It's kind of an interesting, probably over-engineered design, but it works really well. All right, Jonah, tell us a little bit about the keyboard. We have standard... QWERTY layout, and then what do we have up here? The one. It has a dedicated one, an exclamation mark, margin release, and then what's that cool looking green key? The D jammer key. D jammer. So if you're typing and you get a couple keys that are type bars that are stuck up like that, you can flick them back with your finger or just push the D jammer key. So really I like the looks of this thing. It's, it's grown on me. Anytime I get a plastic bodied typewriter, it has to win me over. Uh, but there are some good plastic bodied typewriters out there. The Adler J5s, one of my favorites. The Brother JP7s. I uh, don't think this ranks quite up there with them, but it, it really is a solid machine. And you'll see when I have the body panels off, this thing has an absolute tank of a frame underneath. And I'll show you when the body panels are off. It, it's kind of interesting that the, the frame doesn't rest on the bottom panel. It rests on some plastic feet on the inside. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. 
Now show us some of the features, Dad. Okay, so as I mentioned, it is a wide carriage. Well, first, I guess we got to start with the carriage lock. Carriage lock is this silver lever right here, and that flicks down, and then and your carriage is free. When you're ready to lock it in place, just flip it back up, and there's your lock. So we'll unlock the carriage. It is a really wide, long carriage, 12 inch. Over here has a really good sized paper bale with a little ergonomic hook there that you just flip up with your thumbs. Can you get that on the video? Yeah. So I always like those little touches on typewriters. Has a single carriage release lever right here, and it actually works with my finger ergonomically pretty well. I you just I don't know. It's easy to grab. And then right here is the paper release lever. And this, there's a long rod that goes along the front. And when you flip this, it turns and pushes up against this paper pan. It's kind of a tight push to it. It snaps in and out of position. I got some Molly Lube on there to help with the friction, but it's, I've, I've checked with a friend who has the same model and it's the same for his. It's just a really tight, uh, lever to push and release but does its job has a little eraser table here so that flips up there's the, the Newport name if you ever had to erase that's what this little thing was for hopefully the eraser shavings fall down here and don't do it over the inside of the machine has push and slide margin release or push and slide margin settings and then right here, it's got the pull-up paper support. Always enjoy having those so that the paper doesn't flop back when you're typing. Uh, really cool design on the knob here. It's got a little, if you can see in there, a little texture on the inside. And then, I don't know, just an interesting design. I like it. Over the back, I think I mentioned this is metal some maybe aluminum and then over this side has the variable line spacing here just push that in and it gets rid of the clicks and then if you come up at the top Jonah will get uh, a view of what's up here you got the paper guide so if you want to slide your paper in at 10 or 0 that's what that little sliding doodads for he has um, line spacing up here so you have one one and a half and two and then if you flick it all the way up to zero that also releases the clicks but that retains your line spacing when you're ready to go back uh, we'll go ahead and pop off this hood here so as I mentioned this is metal with plastic buttons and you can see underneath and they have these little springs here that Push the buttons back up when you're done and it has two posts there's a metal post here and one here and those go down into these little metal springs on each side so that's what holds the ribbon cover in place and you, when you're putting it back in you have to make sure that these are going down into the springs if you get it off and this doesn't seat properly then these buttons won't align with these uh, if you can see those, Jonah, those are the actual linkages for those features. So this is the uh, ribbon color, ribbon color selector, touch control, and then tab, tab clear, tab set. So let me put that ribbon cover aside for a minute, and then come on up in here. It's got uh, a four dowel rod system here for the keys, and it. If you look at it from the side, let me grab the camera real quick. They do, uh, there we go. They start to angle back a little bit more as you get the top row of keys. So that's similar to Silver Seiko's and Brother JP7's. Just have a slight angle to the keys, especially on the top row. And up here, Put a blue and green ribbon in it seemed to match the 
on the body, better than black and red ribbon. Uh, does use standard size ribbon spools. Uh, the forks here do require eyelets to trigger the ribbon reverse system. So that just flicks back and forth when it gets to the end of the spool. Eyelet comes out, triggers that, and it starts pulling the other direction. So, let's see, I think we've covered everything in there. It's a surprisingly snappy typewriter. I um, really enjoy the output on it, and you'll see in a few minutes what that looks like when we do the type test. But that pretty much covers it for the features. Jonah, did we miss anything? I don't think so. Okay, we'll move on to the case next before we do the type test. Okay, a couple interesting things to note while I have some of the body panels off. Uh, it, the frame itself is a hulk of a frame. You can see it's really substantial. It has these cross members underneath there. You can see them in the back. And then you can see them in there on the side and the front. So a really solid frame. I don't know what it's made out of though because my magnet does not stick to the base. It sticks to other parts, but not to the base. So I'm just guessing it's pot metal. Um, interesting to note that the base itself does not sit on the bottom of, or the bottom of the frame doesn't sit on the bottom of the plastic base. It sits on the, the edge or the rim of the base, as well as on, there's four Right where the feet go in from the other side, you can see there's four little plastic uh, posts. You can see one of them there. So the weight of the frame and the machine rest on the lip of the machine and on those four plastic posts. So it doesn't feel top heavy, but it's just an interesting design. Normally you see the frame go all the way and sit flat on the bottom of the plastic base. The other thing that's interesting is the how this mechanism works for the touch control and for the ribbon color selector. When you push this, this is the, that's where the button is for touch control. When you push that button, it turns this little plastic wheel in there. You can see the white plastic wheel. And that white plastic wheel has a bar attached to it. It's kind of like a locomotive wheel that goes back and forth as the wheel turns. And you can see that that bar is attached to a plate. Let me throw a little bit more light in here. Every time you push it, that plate goes back and forth, back and forth. And all that plate is doing is stretching this spring right here. This is the tension control spring so when the spring is stretched out like it is now a little more difficult to push the keys and when the spring is released and relaxed it's easier to push the keys so it's kind of a complicated system for just what on most machines is a simple lever uh, to activate touch control but this is similar to the system that uh, they have on the Princess 300. Same thing over here. This is the button for ribbon color selector. And there's that plastic, another plastic wheel that turns. And when it turns, that little cross crossbar right there goes back and forth. Back and forth. You can't see it, but the back side of that plate is attached to some linkages to go the ribbon vibrator so that that's how ribbon control or the uh, ribbon color selector works and just a little bit over engineered design but it still works like a charm and two more things before I put it all back together this little metal plate on the back you can see the hole there that hole fits down underneath this metal clip. Metal clip you can pull up with your thumb. So that, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Plate goes in there like that and is held in place with the spring tension. And then each of these side plastic panels has a little tongue and groove system. This goes 
into the side of that metal metal back plate. So kind of a neat design for the body panels. And then finally, the just wanted to show you the the uh, oh, I have some nice piano music going on in the background. Uh, when I activate the set and clear tabs, you can see the rocker there. That is what set and clears the tabs. And the tab stops are actually underneath the carriage. So, interesting location. Uh, but it's working like a charm. So, just neat little things that you can't see when you have the typewriter all put together. Uh, and again, you can see those cross members going back and forth underneath there, underneath there for this hulk of a frame. We forgot one feature and then my dad's going to put the ribbon cover on. So we'll do the ribbon cover first so I can get it out of my hands. So just line up those posts, one on that side, one on this side, and then clicks into place. And you'll know that it's in there properly when you test those. If it's off kilter, those don't line up with the buttons underneath. Uh, so if you come up here, you'll see on the return lever, when you're ready to put it in the case, let me grab the camera real quick. It's kind of a neat little um, hook on there. I don't know if you can see that, but this little metal hook, and then there's our little metal plate, and then a little hook on this return lever, and that just goes over, push it down, and then it stays like that when it's in the case. And then when you lift up the lever, the spring pulls it out, so. Kind of a neat design. Okay, now we'll do the case. Now for the case. So this looks eerily similar to the cases that I have for some Royal Safaris from this age. So I don't know if maybe the same company was making the, uh, the cases for different typewriter companies. Uh, it looks like it would be aluminum, but it's plastic. So it's actually surprisingly light when you pick it up, You're expecting a lot heavier case. So it's got a little, well, we don't have the key, but if you slide this latch over. Oh, there we go. Just opens right up. And it has uh, these four studs in the bottom. And I'll show you the bottom of the typewriter. The feet have holes in them, and that just rests in there. And then it has some rubber blocks here that come down on top of the machine. And then some rubber uh, bumpers here, I guess, for the back of the machine. And it doesn't prop open when you open it. It just lays all the way flat. So let me grab the typewriter. And if I turn this up, you can see the bottom of the feet have holes in them. And those just go onto those studs. Like so, and then push the lever in and close the lid. And it snaps closed. So it's pretty heavy once you get the typewriter in there because it is a sizable typewriter, but the case itself is nice and light. And that's it for the case. We always love finding old goodies in our typewriters, and this is what we found in the case. So it has the original owner's manual, which I always like having the original. I think this one's available online on Richard Polt's uh, webpage for typewriter manuals, but it's always nice to have the original. And then it had uh, the original unpacking instructions. And then it's kind of neat on the back. I'm going to cover the gentleman's name um, just to respect their privacy, but it's kind of neat. He was in Austin, Texas. And the very bottom line there, you can see this is the first time I have ever typed on this typewriter. So I like getting or seeing little bits of history that go with the machine. So this is definitely staying with the typewriter and the case. Um, and two other things, little replacement ribbon card. 
It's actually a piece of paper, not a card. And then here's your final test and inspection report signed by the inspector. I don't know who signed that. I wonder where this guy is. I wonder if he's alive and where he is. Maybe somewhere down in Portugal. So anyway, just a few original goodies. And now for the type test. Okay, two pieces of paper because the platen is not the softest on this. Two pieces of paper give it a little bit extra cushion. So we'll put the paper support up. It's a little crooked, so we'll straighten it up. Okay, a couple lines on black, or in this case, blue. Typo. And here's the bell, and there's the line lock, so margin release. green. Our dog and our toddler are really excited about this typing test. So uh, a few typos, but the print quality is really good and when I speed up the typing it keeps up I don't I haven't had any skipping or bunching so other than the typo which is my fault I'm really impressed with the quality of the output on this Sears Newport every time I review a draft of a video I always realize the things I forgot so here's a quick look at the tabulator so right now I have them set every 10 spaces so right now here it's on about uh, start over here at 20 so if I push the tab it goes to 30 40 50 so every 10 spaces you can clear those individually it's just like a Smith Corona so you tab over clear tab clear you can set them all at once or clear them all at once. I'm going to leave a couple tab, tab stops over there. So now, if I hit tab, those intermediate tab stops are gone. And then, if you want to go back and set them again, just space over where you want. Set. Tabs are set. So, nifty little push buttons. Hello, this is Lily. We forgot to show a couple things. And how I spell my name is L I L Y. Oh, that's right. And the things we forgot to show are how easy it is to get the body panels off. We have four screws in the corners. There's one there, there, and then two in the back corners. And then there's four screws on the bottom that go through the feet. And so you take those off. And then finally, each of these little springs, this is for the ribbon cover. You see the little screw there? It actually goes down into the metal frame. And so you have to stick a skinny screwdriver down there, take those off. And then the body panels come right off. The other thing we forgot to show is that this has... Uh, carriage shift but it's a fairly light carriage shift it kind of tilts back like on a Skyrider it doesn't lift up entirely it just tilts back so even though it's a fairly big machine with a carriage shift fairly relatively light on the pinkies compared to some machines we'll wrap up this review with some pros and cons some pros 
Cool looks in 1970s color scheme. Wide carriage for landscape typing. Easy to get body panels off for cleaning and maintenance. Yeah, I don't know if I showed that, but uh, there's just the four feet screws on the bottom, and then there's one, two, four screws, and all the body panels come off fairly easily. Nifty push buttons on ribbon color. Kind of like that. Uh, just a neat looking design. I, mean, I don't think it's a con, but we'll touch that in just a minute. Snappy tap light hair and quality output. Yeah, really, uh, really good for touch typing. Oh, pleasantly surprised about that. Dedicated one key. Yep. Coolity jammer key. And also the case is in good shape and is lightweight. And also the original paperwork. And as for cons, it is a large machine. So if you don't have a lot of space on your desk for the wide carriage, then you probably would want to pass on this. But if you're looking for an everyday machine to do a lot of typing, you definitely could do worse because it's uh, at least in my limited experience of this model it appears to be a really solid typer. Um, plastic body panels, that's always a plus and a minus as you probably know from our other reviews. It's a plus in that they usually look good. They don't, you know, the paint doesn't scratch and as long as it hasn't been dropped or cracked, they usually look really good. Some people just can't get past the plastic and think that a real typewriter ought to have metal body panels. Um, I can look past that if what is underneath is quality and even though it's probably not on par with an Olympia or a brother JP7, surprisingly good machine made in Portugal. And then I put this down as a con just because I couldn't really think of anything else, but I don't know if the ribbon color selector and the touch control are over-engineered. But you, you saw in there, usually the touch control and the ribbon colors are just simple levers. Seems like with this system, there's more things to break, but on the other hand, it is working like a dream. So it, it's kind of cool. So we have it as a comp, that's because we were kind of desperate to come up with uh, something to put in there. So overall, we give it a thumbs up. See your thumb, Jonah. Thumbs up. There you go. Thank you for joining us on Typewriter Mints. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.